Okay, so we're here with Kurt Kalea from Malta. How are Rep you guys doing? Representative back from 2012 in Baku. Um, so, uh, Kurt, can you tell us a little bit about the Eurovision experience? So, we refer to it as the Eurovision bubble. Um, so, how was it for you in, in Baku? Um, the, the thing about it is every, every many Maltese singers uh, work very hard to get the opportunity to represent Malta in Eurovision because it's uh, one of our biggest platforms. So, even the moment that you that uh, you win is is a huge moment. Uh, the whole, the process to prepare for Eurovision was a roller coaster. You know, there were times where I would get disheartened, but there were times where I was like, you know what, I've worked very hard to be here, and uh, you know, now that I've got this opportunity, I'm not going to let it go by so quickly. Um, it was an opportunity to meet a lot of people, to learn from different musicians, to learn from different singers. Uh, both good and bad. Uh, Baku, obviously, I, we were very well, very well welcomed uh, by the by the people from Azerbaijan. In fact, even nowadays, co coincidentally, even yesterday, we were uh, uh, sort of communicating with uh, with some events planners that want us to go back as a band to perform there. Um, yeah, I mean, the food there was great. The Crystal Palace, Crystal Hall, sorry, was uh, was an amazing venue to have the Eurovision in. So. It was the first time I performed on such a huge stage. Uh, so all in all, I could say it was a very good experience. So you certainly saw the, the difference from the, the stage at the Maltese selection yes. to, to that huge stage in, of in, in, in Baku. Um, do you think that's something you'd like to do again? It's always uh, like every time the pre-selections in Malta come around, ever since I've been eligible to do it again, um, it was always tempting. In fact, in 2015, I actually had a song and then I didn't submit it because my friend Amber uh, had come to me and told me that she's going to submit Warrior. Mm -hmm. And I told her, this is definitely a winner and I want to yeah. be behind you. In fact, uh, when uh, we were, I, was, I was there working with her behind the scenes as well, and when she won, um, we were meeting up for, for some advice and stuff like that. I actually flew to, uh, to Austria to perform, to support her as well. I performed at some Eurovision parties as well, which was great. Yeah. And I suppose being a small country like Malta, um, it's natural that you've got, I guess, fewer artists. So more often we see artists returning to national finals, um, none, no more so than, than Claudia, of course, um, who finally got yeah. through to, to Eurovision this year. Um, a little bit disappointed um, with the result, no doubt. But That's true. Um, how, how did you feel about Claudia's entry and, and, and how things went? Well, with Claudia, I'm a bit biased because uh, especially like we've known each other since we were at school. Uh, in fact, I used to help her with her math homework. But um, uh, as time went by, especially when I won, she got second place with her song Pure. So there was a bit of... We, we still remained, obviously, friends. But, there, you know, when someone has been working for something for so long and then I had won, there was obviously a bit of... Uh, I wouldn't say drama, but uh, the, the press makes it uh, huger and obviously created a bit of friction between us. But then, uh, as, like... A, few years later like I think two years later we started really meeting up again and uh, you know we said what we had to say we both respect each other as artists this time around when she uh, submitted breathlessly I was like you know what Th this song is so beautiful and the way you sing it yeah. is is amazing and when eventually she won again I was helping her from a psychological uh, point of view preparing for it preparing for if the good happens and if uh, less good happens, you know, in fact, mentally she was quite prepared that if she doesn't make it through, it's just a game at the end of the day, and, you know, it didn't dishearten her, she's still working very hard. Uh, we met up, actually, a few weeks back, because we both of us were performing in Berlin together, and, uh, yeah, we just stayed quite in touch together. Yeah, so the, uh, the Berlin weekend, uh, I wasn't able to make it myself, but it sounded like a fantastic event um, because it was jointly hosted by the German OGAE group and the uh, Maltese yes. OGAE group. So how, how was that experience? Um, well, to be honest, now it's been five years since I did Eurovision and the fact that I get a minimum of four to five uh, invitations a year to go to Eurovision-related events yeah. is uh, it's quite nice, you know, when you think about it because... You get to relive the Eurovision experience in memory and when you're telling the, uh, the journalists, uh, meeting lots of uh, friendly faces, you know, like uh, other singers, other singers that I had never seen before, but I just saw them on the Eurovision stage. 
so it was a lot of fun. And again, I had never been to Berlin before, so that was great. The uh, show was great, the sound was amazing, uh, the audience clapped and sang along. So. And did they dance along as well? Yes, they did. They did. They did the sh They tried. To, most of them tried to do the shuffle. There are a few who yeah. actually managed. Okay. Well, we've been trying to, to practice at homes. Right. And um, so, yeah, tonight maybe you might see us try. We might fall over trying. You never know. But, but we, we never. But know. you never know. But that's always the sign of a good night. Yeah. You know? <laughs> um, so, thinking back to this year's contest. Yeah. Um, so, other than um, Claudia's result, did you did you watch the, the whole of the contest? Yes, this year, in fact, uh, because uh, Claudia was the 30th Maltese representative. Mm -hmm. So uh, the head of delegation, John Bundy, thought it would be a great idea to get all the past representatives of Eurovision and put them like in a VIP area, uh, were seated in front of the stage. Uh, it was a beautiful experience, yeah. you know. Uh, we were there like all well dressed and gala and stuff. So it was really amazing. Um, I enjoyed the show every year. It seems to be getting better. Um, there were lots of good songs. Uh, there were a handful. There was a handful of songs which I really liked. Uh, what was your favourite? Well, I have to say, I have to say, Claudia was my favourite. But uh, also this year, one of the stars was the Maltese one, uh, Janice. She had a song called Kelba, uh, which means star. It was a beautiful Maltese, beautiful Maltese words. Um, it had been a while since we had a Maltese uh, song in the pre-selection. Um, I'm pretty sure that next year there's going to be a good number of songs in Maltese, especially since the last two Eurovision winners both won in their own language. And obviously last year uh, Janice got second place with a Maltese song. So, Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see. So um, Portugal won this year and that was their first victory, having been in the contest for so long. Yeah. Um, now I'm not sure how aware you are of this statistic, but that, that now means that Malta are the nation that have entered the most times without winning. Oh, really? Um, so, do you think that's something that, that could change? I mean, are we on the brink of a Maltese victory? Could we be visiting Valletta anytime soon, do you think? Well, as a Maltese person, I wish that it happens. Yeah, um, my, my honest uh, concern is that because we do not have any record labels um, and we have a music industry, but not a professional music industry on the island, in a sense where uh, we don't have record labels, we don't have, uh, like the sales are, are always very weak uh, because it's a small island. Uh, so the only way I believe that we will get to win uh, more the, the Eurovision would be if the Maltese entrant would have a proper uh, record label backing it up. Obviously the song needs to be good, yeah. but also I believe that the most important thing in Eurovision, bar from all that, is having a true, genuine message. And uh, I think that one of the biggest challenges we have as an island is that we want to seem like it's that, like there's a message, like, but sometimes it just falls weak. Like the like the, the artists, the singers, from all of them that I know, I know that they have a really strong message, but sometimes with the uh, corporate influences of sponsors and stuff like that, they end up losing the the heart of the song, which is a shame because music and art, it's, it's what it's about. Yeah. So thinking about Eurovision more generally and um, some of the songs that we've had o over the years, are there any songs that you've particularly loved that you kind of think, actually I wish I'd have sung that song on stage or I'd love to come back with a song like that? Is there, do you have a particular favourite? In a sense, like the, the, the big Eurovision or the Maltese Eurovision? Um, well, either, but I, I, I guess more in terms of the the main Eurovision to be honest, team. to be honest, this year Norway had a really amazing song, um, uh, Grab the Moment. Yep. When I heard that song, I was like, this is the kind of music I want to be producing with my band, you know. And we were kind of doing that thing with This Is The Night. We had already been producing that, but they have it really, you know, mastered in a sense where they can actually perform the whole thing live. Yep. Whereas what my band and I do is we get tracks and we perform on top of it, so we have like a DJ but we perform on top of it, like with the band and the guitarists and the backing vocalists. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas what uh, I saw Joost doing is that they can actually perform the whole thing live, which, was, which is incredible. Yep. And, and finally, have you got any other kind of sort of messages for um, our readers at ASCBubble.com? Well, um, but as always, I always begin by, by thanking uh, each and every one of them, because what we do would be useless without, without people who enjoy it. Um, I do 
show like my uh, appreciation to that but also I would like to make an appeal where if you like an artist on Eurovision follow them up like even with their other songs and with their other because life unfortunately life doesn't stop after Eurovision for us like we keep on working and we keep on listening to music and performing and writing new music um, what ends up happening is sometimes five ten years fifteen years thirty years later uh, Eurovision fans still mention Eurovision, which is understandable, obviously, because it's part of Eurovision history. But uh, like the artists, we also have much more material as well. It would be great um, if it doesn't stop just by Eurovision. Yeah, and it'd be great to hear those tonight. So um, thank you so much for your time um, this morning. Thank you. Um, and uh, yeah, we should see you on stage this evening. Thank you.